Sometimes we love a brand so much that we start to feel loyal to a brand. Year after year, that brand continues to deliver products that fit our lives perfectly. And so we continue to buy those products and we buy other products from that brand that go well together. Every upgrade feels like the brand is listening to us. Every new feature is welcomed by us. But have you ever thought, what if there's something better out there? Something that can give us speed, something that is also elegant, that we're proud of it. A product that gives us power and lets us get on with work. But it's also great when that product allows us to have fun. These two flagships offer all of those things and I've been using them for about six months now, but it's time I make a decision. Which one will I pick as my main phone going forwards? This video is brought to you by Castify. More about them later in the video. I'm Alex and I do down to earth tech reviews, sometimes, and I'm here at least once a week. It's no secret that I love Apple products, but this isn't about me. There are many smartphones options out there, but when it comes to flagships, Apple and Samsung are the first ones that come to mind. The technology available in the iPhone 12 Pro Max and the Samsung S21 Ultra represent the absolute pinnacle when it comes to smartphones. I have made a few videos comparing these two phones in loads more detail, and I will leave that as a playlist here for you at the end of this video. In today's video though, I'll take you through my decision making process in picking the best flagship device for me. To start things off, let's talk about the design. Both Apple and Samsung have done a fantastic job this year, but I have to say the S21 Ultra for me just has a better design. I do like the flat edges and prefer that to the previous models on the iPhone, but the S21 Ultra just looks a bit more modern for me. I went for the custom Phantom Brown color with this carbon fiber finish here around the camera that for me is just straight fire. And whichever way I look at it, I just don't feel bored. Don't get me wrong, the iPhone 12 Pro Max is a striking device, right? Apple did this really nice throwback to one of my favorite iPhones. It oozes elegance and in this gold color in particular is by far my favorite in the recent models. Though I do like the latest purple color as well. But after a few weeks, this became a little bit commonplace. I can't explain. It's just, it's not that it's boring, but it's not as exciting and as striking as the S21 Ultra for me. In terms of aesthetics, it's gonna come down to personal taste, of course. As soon as I saw this carbon fiber detail, my decision was made. Perhaps a little impulsive there, but I was sold. The design just excited me. For the last 15 years, not much has gone on out of the rectangular shape, so these little details do matter to me. Ergonomically, I also think the S21 Ultra achieves a more pleasing usage, especially for longer sessions of browsing, watching content or messaging. From a price perspective, although they are priced very similarly, Samsung offer a few things that Apple don't. Apple won't really do any decent trading deals, for example. But if you're coming from a previous Samsung model, it makes a lot of sense to use the trading offers that Samsung has. In some scenarios, they might even throw in a voucher towards accessories. And talking about great deals, this is where today's sponsors Castify come in. When you spend over a grand on a device, you want to make sure it's well protected. Castify make these beautiful protective cases for all of the Samsung phones going back to the S9 and all of the iPhones too. And the best thing for you, they're kindly giving all of my viewers 15% off right now. They've just launched these incredible new leather cases for the iPhone. It's got this really nice pebbled finish and lovely detail on the buttons as well with this metallic finish. But the best thing for me is the customization options. Check this out, guys. You can choose from eight different colors. You can add your own name, a monogram, initials, and totally make it your own, adding your unique style. You can play around with the different layouts, different fonts. Really cool. You can get really creative with it. They're made out of 90% recycled material. Even the packaging itself is 100% recycled material. They're all made with this antimicrobial coating as well, which is great for helping stop the spreading of germs. It kills 99% of bacteria. That 1%, you're going to have to keep washing your hands. On a serious note though, they're very protective, you know, consciously sourced leather, really nice grip as well with this luxe leather that they've got. And as I said, guys, the best thing is they're giving you a 15% off right now. And to get that, simply go to castify.com forward slash Alex G today to get your 15% discount. You're welcome. Right, back to the video. When it comes to the display, I won't go into the specs because by now I'm sure you've had enough of listening to thousands of nits, aspect ratio and refresh rate. So without getting too technical on things like OLED and AMOLED and sending you to sleep, this is not the channel for it. Instead, let's watch a few seconds of top quality content in a couple of different lighting scenarios, because that I think is more important than going through 
specs and numbers, though I did cover that in different videos. This here is Disney Plus and the content is available in all of the goodies that we care about, 4K Ultra HD, Dolby Vision, Atmos and HDR10 and it automatically plays that on devices that can support it. The first thing you notice is how bright the S21 Ultra can get. For the purposes of this video, I turned off True Tone on the iPhone. That just seemed to make the iPhone, you know, the picture was too warm for me. And I did the same on the Samsung by turning off adaptive brightness. Though I understand that adaptive brightness could actually make the S21 Ultra even brighter uh, when in direct sunlight. Before this test, I kept it closer to what most people would do when watching content, but I did include a few outdoor shots as well. The iPhone display is not as bright as the S21 Ultra, but it's no slouch. As you can see here, the difference is noticeable when you're watching content, especially when you throw in daylight into the mix. The Samsung display is much brighter for me in that scenario. When we go away from bright windows or at night time, the difference in brightness levels is less noticeable between the two. One very important aspect of any smartphone is the camera. The technology behind these make it possible for anyone to create amazing photographs and videos. Whether it's for professional use or for fun, both of these devices are extremely capable. I know there are better apps out there that I could use for this, but for this test I'll just be using this stock camera app. Starting with the iPhone, the most impressive photos for me are the portrait shots. The skin tones are very accurate in daylight, indoors, outdoors, at night, it didn't matter. When it comes to portrait, for me the iPhone is the king. Zoom, single take, director's view, the Samsung has so many cool features that the iPhone doesn't have. Ultimately for me, point and shoot, the iPhone just does the basic things really well. But the Samsung does that too, and in some shots, I honestly couldn't tell which one was better. Some were oversaturated on the iPhone, and some were oversaturated on the S21 Ultra. Some had more detail on the iPhone, and in other shots, the Samsung did a better job. In terms of dynamic range though, where in simple terms, we want the camera sensor to be efficient in keeping very bright parts of the image from blowing out and not crushing the dark parts into pure black. But I think the iPhone handles HDR better in tricky lighting situations. We are either losing highlights or shadows here on the Samsung, whereas we can still see some detail on the iPhone shots. Of course, if you fiddle with the settings and manually change some settings on the iPhone or the Samsung, you might achieve better results. But this is just a straight up comparison, guys, using settings that most people, typical consumers like me, would use. I did a camera comparison video in a lot more detail, but for now, I'll just say that honestly, there are situations where I'd rather pick the iPhone and other situations where I'd rather pick the S21 Ultra. Out of the box in February, the S21 Ultra had a couple of pretty unusable features like the AK video and some nighttime portraits. Yes, with a tripod and doing some crazy stuff, you could actually get some decent shots, but with software updates, it did get much better. Maybe it was user error, I don't know. But I can't sit on the fence here, guys. I rarely use some of the features that both of these phones have, but I like to know it's there. And based on that logic, I should really be picking the S21 Ultra because it has so many more features. But if I had to pick one right now based on the camera alone and for my use, it would have to be the iPhone. But remember, this video is not about just the camera. What about the software? I've not used an Android device for about 15 years, so I'm gonna be brutally honest. When I picked up the S21 Ultra, I thought I was gonna do a couple of videos on it, return it or sell it at the end, but I was really surprised, guys, at how easy it was to use and how flexible it is as well. The iPhone offers a very smooth experience, don't get me wrong, and if you already have lots of Apple devices like I do, it's nice to use things like the handoff, where the content you're watching or listening to follows you around from your iPhone to the HomePod mini, uh, to the AirPods Max or the Mac and so on. But that's not the thing that I'm missing the most using an Android device. The thing that I miss the most is actually AirDrop. For my workflow, Yes, there are workarounds, but nothing beats AirDrop. But on the other hand, it is quite easy to plug in the S21 Ultra using my, my dock or directly to my Mac and do exactly the same thing using a cable and an app on my Mac. It's not as nice or as quick as AirDrop, but it's only a couple of times a day, so it's not really a big deal for me. It did take me a while to get used to things like the keyboard, but using Google Gboard, for example, helped with that. So we keep hearing about this ecosystem and yes as I said it is nice to be able to do the handoff experience uh, between the Apple devices but when I think about the apps that I use a lot of those apps have their own ecosystem Google Drive, OneDrive, Teams, Evernote, Notion and the one that surprised me the most is Adobe. If you already pay a subscription to Adobe 
you can access all of the apps across all of the platforms and any devices. Some apps are annoyingly tied to either the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store uh, subscription, like Fabulous, for example. But the fact that I can customize the look and feel, there are many other options here on the Android that for me makes it more friendly. I do come from a tech background, so really, you know, it's, it's something that I like. I like to, to customize and have the freedom to, to change things. Now, I know there are a lot of people that don't care about those things, you know, like they like the Apple way of organizing stuff and don't really care whether they can change the, the look and feel of the icons and are quite happy with the widgets. And I get it, but it does frustrate me, for example, sometimes when you are trying to arrange uh, the icon on the home screen on, on the iPhone, especially when it's in that corner uh, of the screen that, you know, it doesn't matter what you do, it seems to completely mess things up. Anyway, small things, right? I wasn't going to cover gaming today, but I know how important it is for some of you. In my previous gaming test videos between these two devices, the results really shocked me, especially with this one game called Genshin Impact. It's extremely demanding on smartphones, and it kind of destroyed both the iPhone and the S20 on Ultra uh, in my last gaming comparison. Both phones completely handled uh, Call of Duty, PUBG, racing games, uh, really well. And they, they did all of those things. But when it came to Genshin Impact, this game killed both devices. But the iPhone struggled a little bit more or quite a bit more than the Samsung, to be honest. The screen basically just kept dimming to a point where the game was unplayable. The S21 Ultra, remember this is the Exynos 2100 version, it did cope with it a little bit better. It did drop frames and it made it a little bit stutter, but I, I was able to play the game for a little longer. There were a few sound issues on the Samsung as well, but again, with software updates, both on the phones and the game itself, I was curious to know if, if those things improved the experience at all. So guys, I've been playing for about 40 minutes and the iPhone is starting to struggle. I can feel it really hot as well and I wasn't going to measure the temperature, but it's so hot that I'm going to have to do it. In terms of gameplay, it's not too bad. I mean, you don't notice it too much, but it's definitely there. You do drop some frames and the screen has been. So guys, after playing for about 45 minutes as well on the Samsung, it has started to drop frames and it's getting really, really warm to the touch. Although the screen hasn't dimmed like it did on the iPhone, but it's very stuttery. The software updates didn't seem to have made a big difference here. Let's check the temperature. Yeah, it's pretty warm. So there you have it, guys. It's still doing exactly the same thing as before. Both phones behaved exactly the same as before. Whilst they're extremely capable and able to handle gaming, when it comes to more high-end sort of gaming, you know, the CPU and GPU can only handle so much. So in conclusion, don't feel afraid to try something new every now and then. I will be moving to the S21 Ultra as my main smartphone now, but I'm also looking forward to seeing what Apple will bring in the future. So Apple, the ball is in your court. Can you win me over? I'm not getting rid of the iPhone or selling it, by the way. I'm doing a full review on it in a couple of weeks, but then I will be passing that on to my wife. There are benefits of staying with a brand and remaining loyal to a particular brand. It could be from a cost perspective, you know, keeping with the same brand sometimes have those benefits, or it may be that you don't want to transfer your data, your photos, your systems, all of your apps from one system to another, but competition between brands is also great. Ultimately, when there's good competition, we the consumers are the winners. And I'll see you and your smiling faces on the next video. Bye.